Well, howdy everybody and welcome to another edition of Stock Show Confidential. I'm Terry Jordan. This week, we're in Grand Island, Nebraska for the Shorthorn Junior Nationals. We're gonna meet up with Rick Shahey. He is the former Lieutenant Governor here of the great state. And then we're gonna visit with Emily Moore. She's the president of the Junior Shorthorn Association. Then we'll visit with the father and son duo, a team of judges, J.W. and Brad McCurry. And then we're gonna round it out with Barb Aldrich. She is our showmanship judge. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it, stay tuned. Welcome to this year's National Junior Heifer Show in Grand Island, Nebraska. I'd like to cordially and, uh, welcome you all to Grand Island. My name is Kent Jakey. We're going to begin our opening ceremonies uh, in tradition is we're going to do our parade of states. We have our host state, the great state of Nebraska. According to ABC's Good Morning America, Nebraska is the happiest state in the nation. And I don't see everybody smiling. Smile. The next state, Alabama, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, the great state of Illinois, Kentucky, Michigan, Minnesota, Tennessee. Next we have Texas. Okay, that concludes our parade of states. I do have some introductions that I'd like to make. Now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce, uh, to give a welcome to the great state of Nebraska, and we couldn't have picked a better person to do that for us, someone that should know quite a bit about this great state, Mr. Rick Sheehy, the famous Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Nebraska. Rick. Well, thank you, Kent, and uh, good evening. I am truly delighted to be here with you tonight here at our state fairgrounds here in Grand Island, Nebraska. I want to welcome all of you to the state of Nebraska, and it is an honor to host the Junior National Shorthorn Show here, and we welcome all the parents, friends, and participants. You know, agriculture is Nebraska's number one industry, and it has played a very important part in our viability through the last couple years uh, through this recession. You know, when we talk about agriculture, Nebraska is a very large cattle producer. We produce a lot of pork. We grow a lot of popcorn. We grow a lot of, of corn. Actually, 35% of our corn goes towards ethanol production. So we believe that when Main Street stays strong, that's because agriculture has been strong here in Nebraska. But cattle is the largest part of our agriculture industry. It contributed about $17 billion into our economy in 2010. Actually about seven and a half billion of that 17 billion came from cattle itself. We are one of the largest red meat producers in, in the country. And so we're very proud and we know that there is a significant demand for quality, safe, agriculture products that are grown in Nebraska and across the country worldwide. Well, we do know that by the year 2050, there are going to be nine billion people living on the globe. That's two billion more than we have now. And so the statistics have shown that that farmers and ranchers that are involved in production now are going to have to double their production in the next several years just to keep up with the demand. And so we know Nebraska and all the other states around the country truly do feed the world. Here in, in Nebraska, uh, our state government is very involved in agriculture, whether we're talking about livestock production, grain production, renewable fuels as ethanol and, and biofuels. Uh, so we work very closely with our Department of Ag to make sure that we have a clear understanding of our industry and really how it affects the state of Nebraska. 
Well, you know, we uh, here in Nebraska, we believe that education and economic development go hand in hand. Each one has to have, have the other. But our university in Nebraska campus in Lincoln was very close to our state fairgrounds, and there was truly a need for us to expand our educational facilities to what we now call Innovation Campus. It's a place where we are focusing on food, fuel, and water, all the components which are very important to our land-based educational institution, but also to agriculture. And so with, with Governor Heinemann's administration, the state legislature, working with the city of Grand Island, we had the opportunity two years ago to build a state-of-the-art state fairgrounds. But most what we're proud of is the livestock facilities that we have here on the grounds. It's a great place for the, the participants to, to be in, in a great environment, but it is also great for the livestock in which they're showing. And I just want to say thank you for coming to, to Nebraska for this competition. I want to wish you all the best luck. I know that you will work hard. This is a great association and enjoy the rest of your time in Nebraska. Stock Show Confidential is brought to you by the following sponsors. Sullivan Show Supply and Stock Show University. SureChamp. Showmaster Feeds. Justin Discount Boots and Cowboy Outfitters. EB Trailer. Luberson Livestock. And StockShowConfidential.com. When it comes to the livestock industry, nobody has more pride for their products than Sullivan Show Supply. Our products are handmade by many retired farmers right here in America. And for them, this isn't just a job, it's their lifestyle. We work hard to produce the highest quality products in the industry for every family like ours that raise, breed, and show livestock. So check us out at SullivanSupply.com. Welcome back to the Shorthorn Junior Nationals here in Grand Island, Nebraska. We're going to head into the ring and talk with a father and son duo of livestock judges, JW and Brad McCurry. Yeah, I guess uh, for us, the most of our family's uh, customers are commercial bull buyers. They look for longevity in an animal. And obviously, structure is the primary uh, goal in longevity. And more specifically, I guess you look, you start at the ground up. You start at their feet. You want to make sure their feet are pointing the right direction, and that, that direction is forward generally. Uh, after, the, after the foot size and placement and, and direction, I guess you'd look towards movement, which is also from the ground up. You want to make sure those, that back foot hits the front foot hole when they pick them up and then they're on, when they're on the move. You want them real fluid in their movement. You don't want to see a lot of jerking around in their joints, a lot of impact when they move or set those joints down. But I guess uh, movement is basically structure. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, from there on up, you want a nice level hip, a long-bodied animal, so you know you have, don't have any birthing problems. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell as far as structure goes. And the breeding cattle, it depends on what you're trying to breed. For females, I mean, I know my family, we're not, we're not overly particular about how stout they are. They don't have to be that powerful muscled. We like to, like to think our bulls bring that to the table when we breed them. At the same time, though, you don't want a light muscled one. If you get too light muscled a female out there, it doesn't matter how pretty or how sound or how functional she is, if there's no muscle in her at the end of the day, there's no product. Well, the steers, I mean, they're, we know they're market animals, so that they're, we're, looking for, we're looking for meat. We're looking for muscle at the end of the day. However, they've all got it, so when they come in the ring, you just look for the first one that grabs your eye. They're usually extremely highly presented. Those cows sort themselves at the top fairly easy. I mean, you just want a level top, nice profile, clean fronted, um, and obviously as much muscle as you can get into them and keep them sound. That was the most fun I've ever had in a long time. But it's something I've wanted to do with my dad for a long, long time. And this is actually my first national show, so it was kind of nice to have him out there for, for lack of a better term, hold my hand, make sure I didn't mess up on the national stage. But it meant a lot to me. It was really important. The captain's second, another really well presented cat. Yeah. Um, I guess we'd like to see him a little deeper body. Um, maybe a little more uniform his body depth from right to back, which get behind him below. Kind of extremely wide out of his pins, carries that muscle weight down a little bit his quarter of his cycle. Again, we just like to see him a little softer, maybe a little bit easier doing it well we're really happy to be asked to come up uh, we're both from kansas come up to nebraska to judge a national junior short orange show and appendix show today 
in the steer show and these breed association shows like this, it's a little tougher uh, to judge these classes because we, we judge each class by age. So we're looking at babies that aren't going to hit their terminal date for, you know, 120, 160 days. The older calves are ready, a lot of them right now when they leave here, they'll go to their county fairs or state shows and they'll be, it's their terminal show. So we don't, I don't feel these cattle at these, uh, these breed shows like this. There was one outstanding steer here that won this show and he just put a lot of good things together. The, uh, the combination calf, feet and legs, muscle package, really athletic through the front end, but he balanced up and a really uniform muscle package all the way from front to back. And that's kind of, especially then when we get to do put our hands on him, I look for cover, uniform cover from front to back, especially over that 13th rib. The foundation breed in that plus show is the short horn, but then we get into different, whether it's the bull or the female, different breeds, so, and different breeds have different traits, so it gets pretty tough to try to keep everything looking about the same and getting a really maternal look to these females that look like cows. And we strive for that, and then when we did get those out here, I thought we had a very maternal group that, to, for our champion drive. Selected as our champion shorthorn plus female. It's a, it's a lifelong experience for all of us, and now Justin, my oldest son, he's gone out on his own with his girlfriend and they have their own little deal going, and it was quite an honor. I asked him, if they asked me to have an associate here, and the first one I thought of was Justin, so it, it's, it is a unique and very fulfilling obligation, I should say. Let's put our hands together and thank Brad and Jay for doing our evaluation this afternoon. They'll be back tomorrow for our own show, but I appreciate their comments today, and uh, let's thank them again. Friends, be sure and check out StockShowConfidential.com, our Breeders Corner. We have the top lamb, goat, pig, and cattle breeders listed there. Check it out. Sullivan Farms in Dunlap, Iowa markets over 350 head of Shorthorn and Shorthorn Plus cattle each year, reaching over 30 states. They were the breeder of the Grand Champion Heifer at the 2012 National Junior Heifer Show. They also had the Grand Champion Shorthorn Plus Heifer at the Nashville Junior Heifer Show, Supreme Champion Female at the 2012 North American, Grand Champion Heifer to 2013 National Western Stock Show, and Grand Champion Bull at the North American and the 2013 National Western Stock Show. Mark your calendars for the next production sale at Sullivan Farms, Sunday, October 20th, 2013. Get online at www.maternallegends.com to learn more about this exciting program. For maximum performance in the show ring, Luberson Livestock. For lifelong joint health, Luberson Livestock. For stock show animals and your beloved pet, Luberson Livestock. Luberson Livestock's oral supplement developed by Dr. Stephen Alday is safe and 100% all natural. Luberson Livestock's patented hyaluronic acid formula ensures the integrity of synovial fluid, the key component for protection and lubrication of all joints. Keep your livestock floating with Luberson Livestock. And on the ninth day, after God made a farmer, God looked down on his planned paradise and needed someone to show off his prized creations. So God made a stock show kid. He needed someone also that would get up before school, feed, exercise, and groom his show animals, and then do it all over again after school in the heat, the cold, the driving rain, or blowing snow. So God made a stock show kid. God said, I need someone who'll set an example for other young people. Someone who'd be on the honor roll, play sports, play music, and be involved in their church. So God made a stock show kid. God said, I need someone who will set a standard, who will teach a lesson about being a humble winner and a gracious loser. Someone who will travel all night, stay up all day, and be ready for the show ring in five minutes. So God made a stock show kid. 
It had to be somebody that when asked would shear a lamb, fit a steer, show a pig or goat for a friend that knows how to change a flat, back a trailer, and asks for nothing in return. So God made a stock show kid. Someone who would bond a family together as parents gaze across the show ring with a laugh, a sigh, and sometimes a cry. And with a smile in their eye, and then reply, they are just like me, doing what mom and dad did. So God made a stock show kid. Well, welcome back to Stock Show Confidential. Now we're gonna get up close and personal with Miss Emily Moore. She is the president of the National Junior Shorthorn Association. She's gonna tell us about all the great things that this organization has to offer. Uh, my name is Emily Moore. I'm from Jerseyville, Illinois. I'm currently serving as the president of the American Junior Shorthorn Association. The junior board's main job is to make sure everything runs smoothly, uh, make sure the juniors are having a good time while they're here, and making sure um, all the contests get ran and the show. Um, when we're not at the Junior Nationals, we go to other major shows, and there we'll help with cattle check-in and work the ring to just make sure everyone gets in and out of the ring in a timely manner, because otherwise it could take a long time for the show to happen. And then we also put on some youth conferences where we just want kids to get to know each other and have a good time and um, just enjoy other things besides showing cattle while they're here. So this week we're at um, Grand Island, Nebraska for the National Junior Shorthorn Show, which is for kids ages 8 to 21 as far as showing, but kids younger than that can participate in the contest. And when I mean contest, um, we have anything from arts and crafts to photography, to team salesmanship, to a quiz bowl, to a cook-off contest where we get to eat lots of yummy food. So um, there's probably about 12 or so contests, so there's a little bit of something for everyone. And um, it's just a good way to get involved and show talents that lie outside the show ring because um, sometimes you don't realize that kids have um, so many inner talents. Like going through the arts and crafts, it's amazing to see what kids come up with. So tomorrow will be the showmanship um, contest where it will be solely based on the individual and how well they present and show their animals. So that's um, a fun contest for a lot of people. Everyone seems to do that. And then we will resume showing again on Friday and Saturday. And Friday we will have our bred and owned heifer show and bull show, which means the exhibitor bred the animal and raised the animal and has owned it for its entire life. And it's like mother. And then um, we will also have a prospect steer show, which are steers that are 900 pounds and under. We'll have our um, market steer show and our market shorthorn plus steer show. And then we'll have our shorthorn plus female show and bred and owned shorthorn plus female show, which shorthorn plus means that they're not um, a purebred, so they're bred with something else besides just shorthorns. And then on Saturday, oh, and we also have cow-calf pairs and shorthorn plus cow-calf pairs on Friday. And then on Saturday, we will just have our owned purebred shorthorn heifer show. Um, so I just want to invite everyone that may be in the Grand Island area or the Nebraska area that has never been to a cattle show or wants to see more. Um, all the projects and arts and crafts will be on display for everyone. We have an awesome vendor set up with all kinds of goodies and food stands. So just come out, get a little feel of what's going on, and we'd be more than happy to have you here. When you enter the show ring, your appearance is just as important as that of your animal. At Justin Discount Boots and Cowboy Outfitters, they have one of the largest selections of boots, jeans, and shirts anywhere in the country. With over 70,000 square feet, they have everything to dress you for success and put you in the winner's circle. Shop where the winners shop at Justin Discount Boots and Cowboy Outfitters. Senior champion showman is 
Showmanship doesn't start here in the show ring. Showmanship really starts at home. Setting them up, being around them, combing, brushing, obviously making the hair work the way that you want it. But in terms of showmanship, when you walk out into the ring, you want your animal to cooperate with you. You want her to be relaxed, you relaxed, and everything works together so much easier. Actually, the animal and the showman, they complement one another. This heifer seems to be real calm, relaxed, and just knowing where she did come from, she has been worked with a lot at home, and that does make a lot of difference. When it comes to presenting your animal in the show ring and showmanship, it's very simple. Just take your heifer, walk with your heifer calmly, slowly, easily, and set her up. You want the front two feet pretty well square underneath of them. Of course, you have to know your animal. If they have some, if they have some, some faults that you need to correct about them, maybe set those feet, offset those feet just a little bit different. Obviously, this heifer is very structurally correct, and Hannah knows that as a showman, so she's got those feet set square under. Now, if you'll notice her back feet, they're offset just a little bit. That, that gives this heifer a stylish look, a fancy look. It, it uh, shows her some muscle expression. She just looks so neat and so relaxed and natural. More than anything, it's a natural thing. How that, if you walk out in the pasture and you see those cows standing there, that heifers just stand natural like that. So those feet aren't always just right straight square under them. It's no different than you and I. We don't always like to just stand there with our feet straight under us. We want to stand where we're more relaxed. And that's where Hannah has excelled today. She knew her heifer so well and showing her as well as all the other showmen that we had out here today. If you would, watch how Hannah brings her heifer in so calmly, so easily, takes her time and sets her up. Maybe I guess if you want to call it a pet peeve a little bit or maybe one of the things that's not to not as smooth when you watch a showman is if they take they come they come out here they stop and they take that show stick and they think they need to poke at those feet to set them up you don't have to do that occasionally you maybe have to use your show stick a little bit to aid and help and set them up move a foot here or there but if you've worked with them a lot at home um, you take your time with them those an your heifer will or your animal will respond to you and and you don't have to do a lot with the show stick um, you will see some people when you're showing, they will tell you to loin them. They'll put, tell them to put that top down. Some people will constantly take a show stick and keep touching their top and touching their top. You don't have to always do that to your animal. Just let them be natural. When it needs to go down, yes, do that. Another pet peeve is some showmen will get in front of them and they'll sit here and they'll just really blow in their face. We don't want you to we want you and the animal to work together and to complement one another. We don't want you to be the show off. We don't want your heifer to be the standout. We want you both to complement one another. Well, thanks for joining us once again on Stock Show Confidential. Next week, we're gonna to head to Minnesota for the great Minnesota get together. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. And until then, here's hoping that we'll see you in the winter circle.